All right, today we're going to talk about ZFS and ZFS snapshots. I'm going to cover the use of the ZFS hidden directory. Uh, I'm going to use GEOM, ZFS, DF, and ZPool to take a look around, uh, to add a mirror, to make some changes, use a snapshot for recovery, and remove a drive, see what happens, and then we'll do some restore stuff. So let's start. I'm logged into a system, it's a FreeBSD system, and it is a 12.1 release patch level 9 system, because I just upgraded it, uh, updated it to the latest patch level. And let's see what hardware we have access to. So GM disk list will list all the hard, our hard drives attached. We've got three of them, ADA0, that's the first hard drive, and it's 20 gigs. It's my root partition when I installed. Later, I went along and I added two virtual drives, ADA1 and ADA2, um, just like as if I had taken an attached hardware to the system, and there's a CD drive. If we look at what Z pools are already in existence, Z pool status, we see that Z root, the default on the first hard drive, ADA0, partition 3, is um, online, it's been scrubbed, and there aren't any known errors. Uh, if we look at the list of ZFS mounts, we see Zroot and a bunch of um, other mounts underneath that. If we want to know a little more about it, we can do ZFS, Git, CAN mount, and see that all of them are mountable, and they are mounts underneath uh, Zroot, except for user and uh, var. Okay, so when you do a a boot environment, a BCTL create or something like that, it's going to, by default, it's going to back up the uh, default along with uh, user and var. All these others are not going to be backed up. Uh, they're not going to be snapshotted. And we'll do some, we'll pick our snapshot when we get around to it in a minute. So another way to look at um, what's out there is DF, the disk free command which shows the percent used or the capacity percentage on the mounts with slash being the prime one. Mm, okay. So if we want to create a mirror, we can do this by um, zpool create, uh, give it a name, uh, we'll call it, uh, call it home mirror. Create Homer Mirror, ADA1, ADA2, all right, which then we can check status on it after we create it. And we can see that we created a, uh, a mirror named Homer. It's a RAID level zero, and it's uh, combined the two drives into kind of one single view. Part of the beauty of ZFS is it's already mounted. Um, if we look in uh, Homer, it's a directory, and if we look at ls-l slash, we can see there's a bunch of stuff, but one of them is this Homer thing. So it's created, it's mounted, it's online. ZFS list will also list it. There it is, and it's got 15 gigs available. Um, there's some overhead associated with the mirroring and uh, using ZFS generally, but all that space is ready and ready to use and use it we will. So one of the first things I'm going to do though is I'm going to create just like um, the install created these subdirectories to keep home and port separate we can create something similar under Homer. So I'm going to use ZFS create to create a virtual device under Homer. Homer is where I want to start and I'm going to call the first one uh, we'll call it user you can call it whatever you want. Um, let's see, Homer work, Homer home, sure. All right, which um, ZFS list now shows that I've got two new mounts. All three of these are sharing the same 15 gigs. Okay, so let's copy some files into home and work. Um, simple cp slash etc slash star into Homer home. And never mind the errors, um, it worked. It just didn't copy all of the subdirectories. So inside of Homer Home, we have 
the files that were in ETC. And we do something similar for cp slash bin slash star into slash homer slash work. All right, so the two directories are they've got different stuff in there. That's great. We're gonna we're gonna do some stuff. So I'm gonna um, make a snapshot at this point of those two um, mounts. I could create a snapshot of the upper mount, but that wouldn't wouldn't affect the two uh, sub mounts or virtual devices. So I'm gonna create those using ZFS snapshot. And then the name of the thing I want to snapshot, which is homer slash work. And then I put an at sign and some identifier at the end. We'll call it snap dash 2020.09.15.13.02 CDT, for example. And I can do the same thing with the user, uh, with the home rather. Then we'll call it 13 yeah, sure why not. They can have the same. This part can be the same because this part's different. Because this is the full name of the snapshot. And we can see this by going ZFS list dash T snapshot. And we see there's the two snapshots I created. Now let's go wreak some havoc in our uh, our drive. So slash homer slash home. That's the uh, ETC stuff, so let's get rid of everything that starts with an R. Let's get rid of everything that starts with a P. Let's get rid of everything that starts with an O or an N. Let's see if that's different. Oh yeah, that's way different. Okay, so we deleted some stuff. Now I'm gonna go into the user directory, uh, sorry, the work directory, and I'm gonna get rid of everything that starts with so R sounds good, and C star, and P star, LS. that looks different enough. I'm trying to say, oh, we can get rid of D2, RM D star. Okay, way different. So we've wreaked havoc in both of these worlds. Um, we could restore um, a snapshot. So the way to do that and we'll do that for this directory here that we're in. Uh, we'll leave the home one alone for a moment. Uh, but we could go ZFS rollback. Uh, helps if I know what it's called. ZFS dash, uh, sorry, list dash T snapshot. All right, then ZFS rollback in the name of a snapshot. In this case, we want the work one. All right, which if we do ls now, we should have more than just four rows, Oops, sorry, than this. And we'll see what we got. Oh yeah, we're back to what we had before. And uh, do the snapshot still exists? Let's take a look. So if let's dash t snapshot. Yep, it still exists. In order to get rid of it, because let's say we're done with the work, trap, the work thing, we can ZFS destroy. Oh uh, yeah, you're gonna need all this. All right, which puts us back to um, being in the root. So we're here. If we make changes now, they're lost forever. Um, if I delete a file, I'll have to get it back from the original source. But over on the um, home directory, we're still in this many files have been deleted state. But maybe I don't want to roll back because I don't know, maybe I made a lot of changes. Um, so we're only gonna, we're gonna do some selective restores. And the way to do that is if I ls-a, okay, I can see that there's no hidden files other than the dot and the dot dot directory, which is the current directory and the parent. Um, all the rest of these are files, however, Unbeknownst to me, there's actually a .zfs directory in here. Um, and I can cd into the .zfs directory. It's browsable in that sense. cd into snapshot, cd into the snap that we created. 
case there's multiple ones. And then there's all the files that I have in my um, home directory, or that I had in my home directory. So if I wanted to restore the password file, for example, I could just copy it out of here, or I could look at it. Um, less password. Okay, there it is. That's a copy of what was in ETC before. So I can just CP it, just like as though I were in the in the original directory. Um, but I'm in this subdirectory down here. But I can copy it back to home or home. Just like that. And then I can CD, CD, home or home. And I can see that I don't have any P files except for password. All right, so it's like time machine backups. It's like you, as many snapshots as you want to take, you can keep. They're browsable. You can interact with them as though they were separate file systems. And uh, that's cool. So now let's, uh, let's do something a little more aggressive. I'm going to remove one of the drives. So if I look at the zpool before we do this, I see that everything's cool. I got my ADA1, I got my ADA2, and life is good. Um, no errors. Seems to be good. So I'm going to halt the system, shut down, dash power off now. All right, it's SSH, so it chimes at me a little bit, and then it closes the connection. But over here in the virtual world, I can show you my screen, and it's shutting down. And never mind that VirtualBox crashes. That's some problem Max got um, with this version I've got. But it, FreeBSD is working fine. So now I go into here and I look at my storage and I see there's my three drives. But I'm gonna click into here and I'm gonna get rid of one of them. I'm gonna get rid of that one. I'm just gonna delete it. And uh, now it's only got one of the two drives. And uh, just for grins, I guess I can create a new one. Theory, there we go. I'll create a new one because we'll probably want to restore it. But I could do this in two steps, but I'm not going to. Uh, just save myself a little work there. Now it's got two drives, but this one is definitely not attached. Uh, it is not known to uh, to the FreeBSD instance. This one is half of the mirror, and this is my root. Let's see what happens when we boot this baby up. I'm going to start it up, and I'll go ahead and start it up with the screen here so you can see what's going on, but we'll use SSH to interact with it. Comes up. Yeah, we don't want to wait 10 seconds. We just enter. Lots of nice messages from the kernel. Handsome, just general troubleshooting type of output. And it's waiting for us to log in. So no, no complaints. Nothing seems to be horribly broken. Let's log in and take a look around. So GM disk list. All right, it's got a similar set of uh, devices. Actually, it's got exactly the same set. It's just, as we'll see, this one isn't attached or known to the system. Let's take a look at the Z pool. Okay, now it's it's interesting. The, the thing seems to be functioning, so let's make sure that that's the case. Okay, there's Homer Home, there's Homer Work, there's Homer Home slash dot ZFS, snapshot, snapshot, da da da. So there's, that's got all the P files and R files and all that stuff that we got rid of. So it, seems to be working even though we've destroyed, utterly destroyed one of the drives. So we'll figure out um, how that's looking. We're going to interpret some of this a little bit. So I did zpool status. It's got a pool, Homer. It's online, but it says the status. One or more devices could not be used because the label's missing or invalid. Sufficient replicas exist for the pool to continue functioning in a degraded state. Not terribly degraded. We can still use it. But it says replace the drive using zpool replace, and we'll do that. Um, then it tells you how to go read about more information. We didn't do a scan, but if we did, we'd still there wouldn't be any data errors, I don't think. 
you know, unless my drive's bad, uh, but unlikely. But we can see that Homer is supposed to be a mirror, and we got this ADA1, but we got this thing that's missing. It used to be Dev ADA2, and I've got an ADA2, but it's not this device. So um, let's let's try the Z pool replace thing real quick. Let's go Z pool. Uh, going to be root and Z pool replace. Let's see what it says. Uh, replace pool. We need the pool name. I don't know what it's doing there. C pool replace, and then the name of the pool, which we called it Homer, and a device ADA2. Uh, let's see what happens. I guess it's probably Homer mirror. Yeah, let's see what happens. Well, I didn't complain, <laughs> so we'll stick with that idea, and we'll check status. C pool status. All right. Okay, it said, hey, um, pool homers online, and we resilvered it four megs and zero days and zero errors and so much time. So it already resilvered it because they're meaning that it already fixed the mirror. So now the, both drives are identical, and I could get I could take drive one this ADA one off, and uh, the mirror would keep running. Because we didn't have any files on there, right? Etsy and user Ben. I mean, there's takes. Well, how many megs did it say? Four megs. Yeah. But if we put more files on, we'd want to wait till it was done resilvering before we tried to remove another drive. Um, but that's pretty much how easy that stuff is. Um, yeah. So, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.